Sometimes, exploring means appreciating the work others have done. I'm author and researcher Mike Luoma. I joined Harvey Buford, former president of NERA, New England Antiquities Research Association, for a look at part of the Manitou Hassanash Preserve in Hopkinton, Rhode Island. Harvey helped preserve this site. He even built the wooden signs here. The sight was overwhelming from the start. Yet Harvey kept assuring me we weren't in the thickest part yet. This was part of an old farm. There's an old family cemetery here. This outcrop has been added to and may now resemble a turtle. This embellished ledge is topped by a likely serpent effigy. Harvey mentioned a little about the OSL, or optically stimulated luminescence dating they did here. I think it was like 600 years old or something like that right. came out. So it was older. I, I was dating down in here. And what the problem with this one, it's all stone on stone. So I had to go I I went around that tree or someplace in there. I was crawling around in there and covered underneath the, you know, something to keep any sun, sunlight away. They had to get a soil sample from beneath the stones, which hadn't been exposed to sunlight since the feature had been built, in order to do the OSL dating.
Researcher Stephen DiMarzo, who often posts in the Ancient Stone Mysteries of New England Facebook group, helped recover some of these possible stone prayers, carefully removing brush and revealing the stonework, so researchers James and Mary Gage could survey and catalog the forms. The research is shared in the recent book, Land of a Thousand Carrots, Revival of Old Style Ceremonies, which I have yet to read. I wanted to develop my own impressions before encountering theirs. Now I can read their book. This is a curious structure. This cairn-like feature seems built to be deliberately open on one side, displaying smaller stones infilling, but sort of spilling out of them. Though a tree is across it now, the tree didn't do this. It's not damage. This was built this way. And there are many of this type of structure here on this site, among the hundreds of stoneworks present. The thing is, I knew I'd seen this design before. Maybe in a presentation? I sketched the form and began asking some fellow stone site researchers what they knew. Turned out Dan Pizzoni had shared similar constructs from a mountain in his area, down in Virginia. Archaeologist Curtis Hoffman, author of 2018's Stone Prayers, pointed out that James and Mary Gage had labeled these the opened-end, closed-end design. Curious, seeing this similar design in both Rhode Island and Virginia. Circumstances dictated this had to be a somewhat condensed tour, but given the hundreds of stone constructs present, how many days weeks or months would it take to go through here were one to linger and look at each separate assemblage. Some certainly stand out, even among so many remarkable stone constructs. This may be a split-filled boulder. Other examples were more obvious. Researchers say a split in a stone can often be viewed as a spirit portal. Some splits appear to be propped or wedged open, perhaps to let a benevolent spirit pass. Other splits like these are filled, and that may be to block the passage of more malicious entities.
Coming up and around this feature, it almost looks pointed in front. This split-filled boulder seems to have a sort of lower extension down in front. Kind of looks like a fish. Everywhere you look, there are stone constructs. These two twins reminded me of two I'd seen together back up in Jericho, Vermont. These are the two in Jericho. Some researchers believe this to be a farmer's stone wall but I spy what appears to be surrounded stones. This, too, may be indigenous work. So many curious constructs here. Now this, this is the thicker part. There are so many stone assemblages here. It 
It is said this is a face. It does appear to be a profile. If you want to learn more about possible indigenous stonework in the Northeast, you might want to join our Facebook group, Ancient Stone Mysteries of New England. You can also check out more videos on our YouTube channel. Or pick up my book, Ancient Stone Mysteries of New England, Discovering Ancient History All Around Us, in paperback, ebook, or audiobook. Find out more about all of it at ancientstonemysteries.com. Once again, a big thank you to Harvey Buford for inviting me down to see Manitou Hasanash Preserve and more sites in his area, and for guiding me through the site on our condensed tour. And thank you for experiencing part of Manitou Hasanash Preserve in Hopkinton, Rhode Island with me. <laughs>